I've been editing videos for almost two years now and I've been spending countless hours working on YouTube videos, client jobs. Here are five techniques that I finally perfected over time. No matter what editing software like DaVinci, Premiere, and Final Cut, or computer system, Windows, or Mac, these tips should make you edit your next YouTube video 10 times faster. Like literally, especially the last tip. So remember, if you found this video useful, make sure to leave a like and drop us up. And now, let's get into it. Alright, so firstly, if you're not using shortcuts yet, you are wasting so much time. Essentially, it's a combination of keys to perform certain tasks rather than going to the future one by one all the time. For example, instead of pressing the Razor tool to cut, just simply press Command and B or Control and B if you're using Windows. Now, every editing software has its own built-in shortcuts and they're all not the most optimized in my opinion. The biggest problem that I see is that your hands have to constantly move across keyboards or move between keyboard and trackpad or keyboard to mouse. So it's good that if you're already using keyboard shortcuts, but what really makes you edit 10 times faster is changing and applying your own shortcuts. And now I'm gonna show you some of mine. W for cut, E for delete, and Q for undo. So basically, I identified the three most used keys, and they can be all performed by just my left hand, by these three fingers. And in this way, I don't have to move my hand between keyboard and trackpad all the time, like I mentioned before. And if you want the entire shortcut, you can sign up my email list down in the description, and you can find the entire presets over there. Next, I can't emphasize how important it is to organize all of your footages, especially creating the same photo structure that you can have for every single single video project down the road. I still remember when I first started, I just used to dump all the footages from a project in, right into the media pool without any folders, any organization. And what ends up happening is I have to search between these, all of these A rolls, screenshots, B rolls, media, everything, and soundtracks to find just like one clip. Yeah, you might get away from like creating like a TikTok or an Instagram reel where you only have one or two clips. But if you're trying to create big YouTube projects and especially for client videos, it'll be a lifesaver to create folders and have it organized. Now, let me run through my photo structure for you real quick. So we basically have three folders in there, project, footage, and output. And the project, it's basically all the proxies and project files. And footage, there's like camera, like these a roll. And then in overlays, there's stills and motion. So still is for screenshots. And the motion folder is for B-rolls and stock footages. And lastly, output is just basically the final video and thumbnail that I export into. Now, one thing that makes a huge difference and allowed me to edit 10 times faster is create a database of all the footages that you might need again in a future project. So that would be like sound effects, music, zoom in effects, stock footage, etc, etc. So in the Venture Resolve, it's called a power bins and I'm sure this similar feature in Premiere and Final Cut. So for example, I have a power bin of all the music that I use in my videos uh, and a power bin and that's downloaded from Artlist, which is my one and only music platform. And if you want to get your subscription, use my link and you get two extra months on top of your annual subscription. So check it out. But yeah, basically, if I want to find the music that I used for another video on this one, I don't have to go download it again or like find it in that folder again. Instead, I can just find it in the same music folder and it'll be much faster. The next concept that I'm about to talk about really took me a while to realize and understand. So hopefully you don't have to walk the long road like how I did. And that is to look at a timeline as tracks rather than sections. I used to look at a video timeline as intro, middle, and outro. And what ended up happening is sometimes I'm just stuck onto the intro part of the video for an entire month, which is real. I literally, that's what happened to me on my first video. Um, if you wanna check it out, um, check it out over here. Like, uh, it's about noise reduction and self-development stuff. But anyways, what you should be doing is looking at them as different tracks. So first cut out all the A rolls, then you add in the B rolls, then the overlays, and then the music music and all the sound design, etc, etc. And this way it's a lot faster because you just have to move on and don't care about those small details and you're just focusing on one track at a time. Now fourthly, I guess this is a pretty 
obvious one and that is to just lock in many youtubers and video editors um, are just doing this on our own time like just like me so there's not really a boss or someone tell us how much work we should be doing so it's really hard for us to have discipline sometime to be honest discipline is also something i need to work on i remember at the beginning of the year i was extremely focused i got a lot of work done but now i always just finish the video before the posting time i scripted this video on a saturday night And I'm supposed to film this video um, this morning on a Sunday morning, but right now it's like 5:38. Not sure if you guys can see. It's 5:38. It's 5:38 in a Sunday night, and I have to finish this, uh, finish editing this by the end of tonight, and post it tomorrow morning, Monday, on 10 o'clock. So, yeah. Quite frankly, this isn't the first time I've done this and it's not the healthiest and most productive thing to do but I guess maybe that's how I learned to edit 10 times faster because I'm just always waiting for these time to pass and just finish it, crunch it up but I need to improve on this, alright? But I guess the best thing is to just schedule specific times just save like half an hour and an hour a day to spread out the, um, the work throughout the week instead of just cramming it and like the, the Sunday night like what I'm doing right now and also just turn on do not disturb like just don't take your phone um, while you're working in the studio all right the last tip and I think this is honestly the biggest learning that I've had ever since starting video editing and I think this can also apply to you just generally in life like not only in video editing and that is Done is better than perfect. Like I already mentioned, I used to get stuck in these tiny details that nobody is gonna realize. And I just used to think that if it's not 100% perfect, I just can't move on. Yes, you can call me lazy and whatever, but you have to realize that in this modern like social media content creating era, quantity is honestly way more important than quality. Like we're not making a Christopher Nolan Hollywood film every single week and I guess the biggest difference between traditional and modern filmmaking and the most important thing that you have to realize is that if you never move on from this one project you'll never be able to improve on the next one and the next one and the next one so yeah that's my five biggest learning on video editing for you guys honestly give them a try and take my advice live a better life if you know you know like so if you found this video helpful make sure to leave a like and drop a sub um tell me any questions comments concerns anything i miss in the comment section below and hopefully i'll see you in the next video peace goodbye